The fallout of the attack on the Saudi oil facility is front and center as world leaders gather at the United Nations this week. Iran's president is there on a mission to support a win for his country, or to win support for his country. Hassan Rouhani unveiling plans to invite Persian Gulf nations into a new coalition. At this time, there is no planned meeting between President Trump and Rouhani. With Iran's Rouhani coming to town, the stage is set for a possible showdown between world leaders. Let's turn to State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortegas. Morgan, it's great to see you. Thanks. Great to be back. Before we get to that, The Washington Post is out with a story tonight saying President Trump ordered a hold on military aid days before calling the Ukrainian president. Officials say it goes on to say ordering acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney to hold back close to $400 million in military aid for Ukraine. Is that accurate? Well, first of all, we'll let the White House speak for the president's um, interactions and conversations. I think it's important to note what Secretary Pompeo uh, said on Sunday on the Sunday shows. He reiterated the fact that it is the Trump administration that has provided aid to Ukraine. Meanwhile, during the Obama administration, they sent blankets and good wishes. Uh, you know, Ukraine has been facing Russian aggression for quite some time, and it's the Trump administration that is working to, to, to thoroughly counter uh, the Russian threat uh, that the Ukrainians face. Iran's foreign minister raising the possibility of a new nuclear agreement with President Trump. Let's listen. We are prepared. If President Trump is serious about permanent for permanent, permanent peaceful nuclear program in Iran, and permanent monitoring of Iranian nuclear facilities. Your reaction, Morgan? Well, let's talk about the facts of where we are. Uh, as Secretary Pompeo has laid out for the past week before he went to Saudi Arabia and UAE, Iran committed an unprecedented attack uh, against their neighbor, Saudi Arabia. And it's important to note that Secretary Pompeo was right. We had many people in the news media, uh, we had many former Obama administration officials, people who should have known better, that believed the claim of the Houthis, who were obviously lying, that they were responsible for the attack. Anybody who has access to Google Maps could have figured out on their own that it would have, been, would have been physically impossible for the Houthis to have the capability to do so. So the secretary, Secretary Pompeo, pointed this out right away. Many critics rushed to believe the Houthis or the Iranians as opposed to believing uh, a U.S. Uh, Secretary of State and former intelligence official. And the Iranians have really painting themselves into a corner here with this unprecedented attack uh, on their neighbor. And how they've done that is we saw something very significant today. What we call the E3, mm -hmm. UK, Germany, and France uh, today put out a statement uh, that said that they believe that Iran is responsible for this attack in Saudi Arabia. And what's even more important, something that we have been talking about for the past year in this administration, since Secretary Pompeo came to, uh, to the office, we've been talking about why the JCPOA was not a good deal. And it's not just because it did actually provide a pathway for the Iranians to get a nuclear weapon, but because the JCPOA did not address the malign uh, activity by the Iranians in the reg region, and it, the JCPOA did not address their ballistic missile activity uh, either. So the E3, UK, Germany, and France were very grateful today. Not only said that Iran was responsible, they said in a new deal that we are going to have to confront Iran's behavior in the region, we're going to have to look at a longer-term uh, nuclear negotiation, and we're going to have to look at their ballistic missile production. This is something that we have wanted our friends and allies uh, to be on board with us for quite some time. And I know Secretary Pompeo said earlier tonight in a tweet that he encourages more nations to do so. Here is President Trump today on potential talks with Iran. I don't think we need a mediator. He's a friend of mine, but uh, we're not looking for any mediators. They know who to call. Do you expect conversations on the sidelines up there at the U.N.? That's certainly up uh, to the president to decide. I would remind you that um, Abe of, of Japan asked President Trump if he could go to Iran and try to negotiate and, and sort of be a go-between between the two. And while he was there, how did the Iranians dis respond to the diplomacy of Abe? Well, they attacked a Japanese flagship. And so every time we have seen in this administration when President Trump and Secretary Pompeo have extended their hand in diplomacy, it is met with kinetic action. The 
president has been offering for, for a long time. You just saw Secretary Pompeo at the White right. House with Secretary Mnuchin in the press conference uh, saying from the White House saying that President Trump would be willing to meet. How did the Iranians respond to that? They took 60 percent of the oil capacity in Saudi Arabia off the market. So we have called for peaceful resolution. We've called for diplomacy. And every time we are met and our allies are met with kinetic action by Iran, their responsible behavior is coming home to roost this week. State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortegas, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Mike.